Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Silicon Minds Human Hearts. And I'm here with Ivan Lee, who is the founder and CEO of Data, Data Sword. Am I pronouncing that correctly? It's all correct. Awesome. Asim, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah. So my name is Ivan. I'm the founder and CEO here at Datasore. We've been in operation for six years. Um, my own background is I studied computer science here at Stanford. Uh, I've been working in NLP and machine learning for the last 10 years. Prior to this, I was over at Apple building some of their machine learning solutions. Um, so when I started Datasore, I was really excited about natural language processing, the branch of AI related to text, documents, audio. So we wanted to do everything related to NLP. At the time, it wasn't super uh, popular. Everybody was more talking about uh, computer vision and self-driving cars. But obviously the world has changed in the last couple of years with the advent of LLMs. Uh, NLP has suddenly come to the forefront of a lot of organizations' minds. So really exciting to be here. Awesome, thank you. In, and in this interesting natural language processing used to be hard. It was very hard and it's still hard, but JDI kind of revolutionized this, made it almost feel easy. Yeah. How do you, you look to this? Absolutely. It, it's definitely changed the way we approach a lot of problems, right? In the past, you would have to like write your own sentiment analysis uh, uh, algorithm. You'd have to train it, get all this data and, and something like an LLM can just give you those answers right away. So it's certainly shortcut a lot of, uh, a lot of projects out there, but at the same time, there's new pros and cons to uh, Gen AI, right? So for example, we have significantly higher latency um, and actual costs we, ha we have to think about. So I still think that a lot of the traditional NLP models um, make sense. It really depends on the problem that you're going for uh, and what you want to use depending on your particular requirements. Of course, yeah, that makes sense. Um, because are you now, you once started in the, the labeling in the, there was your, what you, you, your startup was about. Yeah. Um, are you now using LLMs there as well? Yeah. It's actually been, um, revolutionary for, for the labeling business because now you can use LLMs to automate a good portion of what had to be done by humans previously. Right. So identifying like Redmond or San Francisco or cities, instead of having humans do that, you can have LLMs do the easy work for you and have the humans focus on the more complicated, uh, advanced subject matter expertise, right? So it can help automate that. But on the flip side, labeling data is still important, right? In order to train these, these foundation models and continue fine tuning them, sometimes you need additional labeled data to kind of guide it and help uh, get to the next level. And so it kind of goes both ways. And how do you keep that balance in, in the human labeling and the, the automated process? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we try to do is always work backwards from the problem that the user or the customer is trying to solve, right? Let's take a simple example we can all understand. If you want to take um, a receipt and understand what are the different items on that receipt, what was the date, what, were the, um, what was the subtotal and the prices for each one, uh, you can combine kind of more traditional OCR uh, that is already very good at extracting what information is there and then combine that with an LLM, for example, to try and understand, you know, the unique items and how they relate to one another. So uh, depending on, you know, whether customers want to optimize for quality or speed or performance or, uh, or cost, these will often lead to different answers. And if you look at um, more the responsible AI, is it? Uh, side of things because labeling also comes with some form of interpretation. Yeah. How, what is your company's take on, um, do you have some guidelines then that for those labeling processes? Yeah. We often, um, work with our customers to kind of share best practices, right? Uh, it can be very difficult. Um, what we consider to be responsible, ethical, these are guidelines that are developed oftentimes over the course of centuries by legal cases and it's an ever evolving definition, right? Uh, once at a prior company, I was asked to come up with a definition for what is appropriate, uh, what is family friendly by that company's definitions. 
And I thought it would be easy. I thought I could just go like borrow from movie guidelines or TV show guidelines, right? We have all these um, already out there, but it turns out it's highly subjective. And so you do have to put a lot of thought into this. It is as much, um, elite, uh, it's as much a technical problem as it is a societal problem, right? A philosophical one. And so uh, there are a lot of these questions that we have to continue answering and deciding like, for example, what uh, a foundation model like ChatGPT should and should not be answering. Yeah. Because, we're, um, because it's also almost a cultural problem, right? Oh, absolutely. Valid for some country is, is different in another. Exactly, right? Um, it is absolutely uh, different from country to country. It can be even divisive and, and different um, uh, amongst the populations within that country, right? And so as AI becomes a global technology, um, we have to be sensitive to what different populations uh, are expecting from something like this. Yeah, of course. And we talk now about the labeling part of things, but I, I think it's two years ago or one and a half years ago, you also released another product, right? Yeah. It focuses more on the Gen AI large language models um, part of it. Could you explain what, what LLM Labs brings to the table for LLM Lab? Yeah, so we released this product, LLM Labs, two years ago. And it started as an internal product. It was difficult for our data scientists and our engineers to keep track of all these different models that were being launched left and right, right? Um, I have this presentation that shows like every month of 2024, there was another model that was top of mind for everyone. It was either Llama or Claude or OpenAI releases O1 or obviously recently DeepSeek, right? And so there's all these models and it can be overwhelming for people to keep track. It seems like everything beats is top of the leaderboard, um, excels at the benchmarks on some dimension. And so what we did with LLM Labs was make it really, really simple to just set up three, four, five of these models and just look at the answers and see how it performs on your data. It's great that it does well at this logical reasoning academic data set. It's great that it does well on the bar exam. But if you're an e-commerce company, does all that matter to you? What matters is that it understands how your customers are um, and your users are going to utilize this, right? And so you can plug in your prompts, connect it to your data and just assess not only how good the answers are, but also things like um, speed and cost. We're seeing a lot of companies move from like the pilot and POC phases and move them into production. And if you've got a million, 10 million customer support queries coming in every month, there's a big difference between something that costs, you know, 10 cents per query versus 0.01 cents per query. That can actually save your company a million dollars a month. Right. And so uh, these are the choices that uh, users need to make. And LM Labs tries to make that as simple as possible. And that is, is, is that a, an automated process as well as an, a human evaluation? Great question. Um, so it, it's both. You can uh, either kind of anecdotally and manually test it yourself. Uh, another kind of growing best practice is that people can uh, input 10, 50, 100 of these prompts along with what the correct answer is supposed to be. And we will give you a report card showing, hey, here's how GPT-40 performs on it. Here's how Llama performs on it. Here's how DeepSeek performs on it. And you can actually run this automated test on a daily, weekly, monthly basis and just continue assessing, right? Hey, maybe um, there's a new model from uh, OpenAI that was just released. How does that perform against like what we've been using so far? What's the cost difference? Is it worth it for us to swap over? I think moving forward, having this optionality and, and like model portability is going to be really important because you can no longer commit and say, we're going to use this one model forever. The, the, the state of the art is constantly evolving. Yeah, it's going so fast. So fast. Yeah. So good that we have a tool that helps us evaluate. Um, yeah. And if we look at these, these LLM evaluations, um, where, where LLM Labs uh, contributes a great deal in, in evaluating those. Mm -hmm. What is still our biggest challenge for those evaluations? Biggest challenge, I think, uh, comes down to subjectivity of what the correct answer is. Let's again take a very simple example, right? Let's say um, it's supposed to answer how you should reset your email. 
there are multiple ways you could answer that. You can just say like, go to this link. Or you can say, in order to reset your password, please use one that you haven't used in the last two years by resetting your password at this link, right? They're both correct answers. One is more comprehensive and has a more formal tone to it. The other one is more direct. And different companies might want to use different answers depending on their own brand guidelines, right? So unlike in the past where uh, there might be one correct answer for an algorithm, here there is a lot more subjectivity, and I think we're getting used to that, right? There's also things like um, the non-determinism of, of these foundation models, and you'll get the correct answer 95% of the time, but it's at 5% that can be really embarrassing, right? So being able to better understand the technology, uh, provide, some, um, provide some security barriers so that you know, we minimize those occurrences, I think that's what the industry is rapidly evolving towards. So we have repeatable format and just uh, quality results from our layer of language models. But if we look then at the safety part of things for, um, because they can maybe give harmful considerations or recommendations or uh, there's a lot of bias, of course, in our data. Yeah. Do you have some form of, of benchmark? How are you evaluating those? Yeah. Yeah. And again, um, credit goes to the community for developing these benchmarks and these kind of techniques very quickly, right? So we use, for example, um, frameworks like Langchain and, and Ragas that allow you to evaluate not only on an answer correctness level, but also toxicity and bias as well. And so by uh, allowing people to evaluate quickly on these dimensions, uh, they can assess how this is going to be performing at scale. Awesome. So good. One last question that we really love asking everyone. How has AI affected your personal day-to-day -day life? What tool do you use most or love most? <laughs> um, that's, that's a big question. I think one thing that I've discovered recently is, is voice mode, right? So actually, even on the drive down, I'm able to just kind of brainstorm and, and it's a non-judgmental uh, kind of assistant that can talk about anything from setting uh, fitness goals through to like, hey, I'm dealing with this issue, help me walk through it. Or I have a presentation coming up, talk to me about different titles we could use for that, right? Um, I, there's this anecdote, because I used to work in Siri and kind of personal assistance. There was this anecdote of a kid who was growing up and was like on the playground and just asked like, hey, Alexa, like, what do I do about this? The next generation is going to grow up with access to these assistants on ev everywhere, right? On these, on their devices. And so I do think this is actually going to change this interface between um, computers and humanity. Yeah, it's a, yeah, that's a very good take on things because things will definitely change. Uh -huh. And making AI the new form with interacting with everything around us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your this information. Thank you for sharing this knowledge. Um, thank you for being there and I hope to see much more of you in the future. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. Thank you.